Welcome back to my kitchen. Summer often means an abundance of fruit, um, but what do you do with a bucket of plums that Uncle Max has given you on Sunday? Today we're going to make jam. So what I've done is taken a kilo of plums and chopped them all up, taken the stones out and put them in a bowl with 250 grams of raspberries and a kilo of jam sugar. That has to sit overnight and that's what you get. So once it's all sat, um, you add in the juice of a lemon and the zest and pop it into a pan, preferably one that is flat. Apparently that gives a whole lot of surface area to the jam and it just helps it to cook a little bit quicker. So we bring the jam to the boil while the jam's cooking, just grab a saucer or a plate and pop it into the freezer and make sure that's really cold for when we test the jam. So our jam has come to the boil and we're going to just let it simmer now for about 20 to 30 minutes. If you've used jam sugar, that has pectin in it and that helps with the setting process but if you're going to just use plain caster sugar, you can get a product called Jam Setter. And I think this has some sort of pectin gelatin formula in it. You just bang it in now, um, just as it's come to the boil, and that should help to um, make sure that your jam's not too runny. So we're just gonna let that sit now and simmer away. And we just need to make sure that we've got some jars prepared. What we need to do is make sure that they're washed in hot soapy water and then you can sterilize them in boiling water and then into the oven or you can run them through the dishwasher on a hot cycle for about half an hour and just make sure that when you put the jam into the jars the jars aren't cold because you're going to end up with cracked jars. Alrighty, we've got our cold plate and we're just going to test and see if the jam is cooked. So take a, a spoon. What we need to do is run our finger through the jam and if it stays into two separate um, portions, then we know that it's done. That looks pretty good. What we can do now is take a knob of butter and plonk that into the jam. Turn it off and give it a bit of a stir and that's going to dissolve any jammy scum that's on the top. You don't have to use the butter if you don't want to. So if you're making this for a vegan contingent, you can leave the butter out. Okay. That's going over to the board. With Katie's wedding planner. Alrighty, so our jam is not boiling hot and our jars are not freezing cold. All we need to do is ladle the jam into the jars. I've managed to find some covers. Clearview uh, transparent covers for preserves. It's just like a piece of filament paper that we're going to wet just slightly with our finger. Bang that over the top of the jar and seal it with an elastic band. As that cools, it's going to become airtight. That will keep our jam for about six months to 12 months in the pantry in a cool dark place. So really that's all there is to making jam. You can do this with any fruit as long as the quantities are the same. And that's it. That is as easy as it's going to get.
1.25 kilos of fruit has made five rather large jars of jam. And if you want to go really fancy and give this stuff to your friends, you can always just like put a liddy thing on it. There you go. Make it a bit pretty. But the only thing that you're limited by is your imagination. So go forth, jam and enjoy. Welcome back to my kitchen. Oh man. I can't do it with him there. If he's not behind the camera, he's pulling the faces. God, that was loud. That looks pretty good. Alrighty, so what we can do now 